What is up, bros and psychos? And we are back with a brand new how-to video. And in today's video, guys, I'm going to show you my render settings for Premiere Pro and how I get my video so crisp and clear. I've been getting some feedback on what software I use and what settings I use. So I decided to bring you guys a video. That way you can actually watch it and follow along if you need some help. So if you find the video helpful, give me a like, leave me some comments and questions if you have any down below. And always subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos. So let's jump right into this. So obviously I am using Premiere Pro and I have a little 30 second clip for you guys that I just cut real quick and it's just there's no audio in it I cut the audio out for the video and basically what we have here is say this is my final product and I'm ready to export to YouTube or sorry I'm ready to export out into an mp4 I've made all my cuts I've added my end cards my intro my music my uh, audio overlay if I had anything like that and this is my final product ready to go what you want to do guys is you want to export this file and we're going to export media and we're going to so we'll do match source bit rate and this is going to be the standard output and we'll make our changes down here and I'll show you and, and tell you why each one is getting made and the purpose for it. So your format always has to be H.264, H.264. YouTube recommends that. It's very, very universal. It goes for mobile phones, tablets, uh, PCs, laptops. It all works um, no matter what streaming device you use. It's always going to work for it. You have your output name here. You can change it if you want to. We're not going to for the sake of this video. Your output right here is going to be your final video settings. So whatever you want your video settings to be, this is going to show up and it'll change as we start changing this down here so your source is basically what you've recorded and it's going to give you your resolution which i record at 2560 by 1440 at 60 fps and there's no audio right now because i cut it out but if i had audio it would show it down here i record at 60 fps but i don't play at 60 fps i play at 144 but youtube doesn't support 144 fps and neither does obs studio 60 is the max right now and i'm assuming that will change uh, as time goes on. So right here, this is where all your settings are going to take place in your changes to make a crisp, clean YouTube video. Effects, I wouldn't even worry about effects. Now, if you're running Sony Vegas or even PowerDirector 14 or 15, how you go about changing this is going to be different from the screen right here, obviously. But nonetheless, the settings are the same. They will be the same across YouTube because YouTube is its own entity. So when it's uploading and processing, it's going to process your settings the same way. And then it's going to adjust accordingly when it loads to YouTube. So your settings will match mine. So we'll start by video here. We'll uncheck all this and we'll go one by one real quick. I don't want to take you guys' time too much. So we're going to do a 1080p video, 1920 by 1080 p So we'll do 1920 by 1080 p and it automatically adjusts because we're in a 16 by 9 ratio. Your frame rate's always going to be 60 if you want that high quality, beautiful video. Field order is progressive. I never worry about this because I can't change it anyway. It's grayed out. It's always grayed out. Aspect, always do square pixels one by one. You see how I changed that? Look at this screen right here when I hit when I hit some different. See these black bars on the side, these edges. It's gonna happen whenever you uh, upload it like that. So we don't want that. We want square pixels. We want a full box so it takes up the full screen, and there's no kind of bezels, black bezels or anything like that on the edge. TV standard. So for USA and Japan, you use NTSC, and for Europe and Asia, you use PAL. Pretty self-explanatory. Depends on your region. So for us in the states, it's just gonna default to NTSC, and I'm sure it'll default for you guys in Europe and Asia, uh, depending on your region and what software you use to your profile always go high reason being is if you go main you may get some quality loss uh, i know on high you will this is basically lossless quality and it'll just make your your videos a lot smoother a lot crisper level is default at 5.1 you can go to 5.2 and i wouldn't recommend going anything lower what level does is just goes with your your bit rates and whatever your bit rate setting is and it just helps make your videos a lot crisper a lot smoother i always render at maximum depth I have some frame loss somewhere it will pick that up it takes a little longer to encode but i'm fine i can wait an hour or so for encoding no, no big deal your bit rate encoding you want a variable bit rate to pass what this is going to do is it's going to pass over your video twice to make sure everything's smooth all the frames have gotten caught there's no jagginess there's no jumpiness nothing like that you get a smooth transition most important thing right here guys your target bit rate your maximum bit rate these are my settings that i found works best for youtube you want to go target bit rate at 15 and you want to go maximum bit rate at 50 and you're probably wondering why the big gap in these two and i'm going to tell you why right here our target bit rate is 15 and our maximum bit rate is 50 so if you come over here and just you can google youtube bit rate settings and then you just come to recommend and upload settings right here and come on down to bitrate and you'll see your bitrate settings right here. So we're doing HDR, which is high dynamic range. So 1080p at 15 megabytes a second is the recommended. So that's where our 
target bit rate comes in. But where does the 50 come in, you might ask? Well, the 50 comes in right here. 1440p is recommended 30. 4K is recommended 66. We all know that 21 or 4K is double 1080p. So what I'm doing is I'm finding my sweet spot in between 1440p and, and 2160, which is 50. What happens is now we are rendering 1080p, but with that maximum bit rate of 50, we're getting the best quality out of 1080p that we can. It won't go over 50. It won't go under 15. It's going to set that target bit rate. Now, sometimes it will spike up some, but it's going to compensate for that. So we're actually getting the best quality that you can out of 1080p by just going to the next resolution, which is 1440 and a little bit above it. And it just makes for a crisp, clean this awesome awesome looking video now i have done and what i recommend you guys do if you want to is take 30 second clip like this and make about five or six of them with different target bit rate and maximum bit rate settings and just name them like target bit rate 15 to 50 target bit rate 15 to 40 and what you can do is you can privately upload those to youtube and kind of watch them on your phone watch them on your tablet and pick which one is best looks best to you and just use those settings that's what i had to do but this is an awesome starting point for you guys and i recommend most of you guys won't be recording in 1440p most of you will be recording in 1080p and rendering in 1080p so you, realistically you can drop this down to about 20 honestly and that'll cover your 15 megabytes a second and you can maybe even actually go to 30. you can you can just try to go to 30 but from my settings i found that 50 works the best but we'll move on and uh, like I said, if you have any questions, guys, please down below comment and I will definitely help use maximum render quality. So this just gives a better quality scaling because I am scaling down. I'm going from 1440 to 1080. So I want that maximum render quality. So I have no lossless, nothing that gets lost. And then use previews. All this does is just you can watch your video as it renders and uh, you can go back and see how it's doing. And it it does make it render a little bit faster uh and that's pretty much it guys as far as audio goes uh i just leave everything standard 48,000 hertz stereo audio quality actually i don't even think uh youtube supports 5.1 dolby digital so just leave it at stereo audio quality absolutely go at high and your bit rate absolutely go as far as you can go that's going to give you your best sound that you can get the multiplexer just you leave it at mp4 it just uploads straight to youtube like that you don't have to change anything captions self-explanatory and published this just basically means you can go straight to youtube with it which i don't i just manually do it and as you guys can see i have a custom setting already for whenever i'm ready to go and i can just go ahead and render this now i do want to talk to you guys about time interpolation real quick this is used whenever you have some time slowing or speed up in your video so say like me my battlefield one montage kills whenever i do a headshot with a sniper or a kill like that i slow the video down and make it dramatic so you guys can see it so what that does this is where these three settings come into play and which one works the best frame sampling just means it's going to take a sample of your slow frames and leave that time mapping into it but there's a chance that you can get some kind of stutterness or shutterness that way you, not all your frames are in line and you may actually lose frame or two here or there so it kind of looks jumpy frame blending is used whenever say you record in 60 fps but your video have been rendered in 30 fps so what that's going to do instead of having some like tearing and some pixelation it's going to blend those frames together and kind of make it look smooth so you can't tell the difference and optical flow i find is the best because optical flow is going to give you that subtleness of transitioning between two different speeds so say you're coming from 60 fps and you drag it down to about 20 so you can get that cool headshot kill that you got from across the map when you come into that shot what it's going to do is when you hit your slow when you hit your time remapping and it slows what it's going to do is it's going to transition real real subtle and it's going to flow and then whenever you speed back up to normal speeds it's going to just transition out and if you guys are confused about that you can just google i'm sorry you can youtube these three and there's a video of it with a woman's hair waving and she whips her hair and you can see the different types and you can obviously see that optical flow is the smoothest transition so I just wanted to bring you guys this video just in case any of y'all are having any kind of render problems and getting high quality videos on YouTube. It is a process, guys. It really is. This is not easy. Uh, there's so much more to this than just what I've showed you. But this is the basic part of it. If you follow this outline right here and tweak it a little bit as you need, you will be making some badass crystal clear videos. And no, nobody wants to watch 240p or 360p or even 144p. We all want 1080p, 60fps, even higher. If we can get it so i hope this brings you luck guys i hope it does help and i'm happy to answer any questions you guys have leave them down below and i'll be looking out for your feedback so i am psycho sam man you guys are awesome you live easy and game hard i will see you in the next video i am out peace